Have you ever tried to work out without listening to music and felt even more fatigued than usual? Research shows that listening to music during exercise actually results in higher levels of endurance, power, productivity, and strength. Our next guest can attest to the power of music to power you through. Andrew Hayward is the director of the Augustana Vikings Marching Band, and David Primus is the associate athletic director for Augustana Marketing and Communications. They're here to share more on music's impact with physical activity and why that's a main reason they're bringing back the Viking Marching Band after a 50-year hiatus. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining me here today. Thanks for having us. Good morning. So, Andrew, first, does this really make a difference? I know research says it does, but if you've never actually tried to work out without listening to music, you wouldn't maybe know this. But does it affect us? It does affect. Uh, music interacts with the part of the brain that controls movement. So any kind of uh, music that you interact with during any kind of physical activity will increase performance and endurance. Um, personally, I've been a runner for about 20 years, and I've used music to uh, run marathons, and I like music that will not only in, uh, invigorate me, but relax my mind so that I can focus on the highest level of performance possible. And when you're running for that length of time, I mean, you're listening to a lot of music and to power through that, so I can't even imagine, you know, how much you put into making a playlist for that. So we'll get into the, uh, that a little bit more, but first I just wanna talk about the benefits of, you know, using music, and the movement? Well, in general, music and movement, uh, the research shows that it increases cognitive ability, learning ability, um, and performance ability And when you're talking about athletics. Uh, because whenever you combine higher level uh, brain activities, you're gonna get some serious, serious benefits. Um, when it comes to getting a pace or using a pace, maybe you have like a goal you want to reach. Can music help you reach that and like work harder and go faster? Depending on my workout for the day, let's say we're talking about running. Um, say I want to try to beat my time. I pick songs with a faster beat so that will increase my cadence when I'm running. Because you naturally just want to keep up with the, right. the beat as you're doing the steps. Mm -hmm. That's so interesting to me. So David, when the athletes are working out, whether they're actually playing on the field and there's music in the background or weightlifting, does the type of music that you guys have playing in the background, can you tell that that affects the athletes? Yeah, it absolutely does. And it, it kind of just sets the standard for uh, the atmosphere at that time, whether it's in the weight room or even at the game itself, playing certain kinds of music uh, ahead of certain uh, times in the game, whether that's with the Viking marching band or something that we're playing through the speaker system at the stadium. And did you really notice this during the pandemic when fans and people weren't really allowed around? Yeah, absolutely. And I think it even came through on TV. You could tell that games just didn't have that same atmosphere in the building when you don't have fans there. And even with the piped in music, the combination of the two ends up uh, adding quite a bit to the game atmosphere. So let's get into different types of music. I mean, when I'm thinking about listening to music during my physical activity, what are some things that I should consider? Well, a lot of people like pop music because that's, uh, especially dealing with a, a Viking marching band at a college, uh, a lot of the audience and the, the students and the, obviously the members of the football team are gonna be very familiar with popular music. Uh, so we've programmed a lot of current within the last 10 or 15 years so they can recognize that music, and then since they recognize it, they can get even more energized ab about it. And one of the big things, too, that I found when I was doing some research is the lyrics and motivational lyrics. So if you're working out, like, on your own, and sometimes it's hard to get yourself to go to the gym, and, you know, we all want to do it, but it's, you know, to get there is one thing. So when we're listening to something motivational, how can that affect our physical movement and what our workout ends up being like? Because any, any little... Ticks, uh, tricks or tips that you can put in that will kind of get you over that edge. Those types of songs that have kind of lyrics that will motivate you, I like to put near the end of my workout so that I make sure that I, I go strong all the way to the finish line. If you're not doing really, really high intense activity, maybe you're going for a walk with your dog or you're just walking on the treadmill at the gym, it, when it comes to motivational, could you do like listening to podcasts? I mean, does that, does that work because it kind of gets your mind distracted and in a mood, or do you recommend doing something with a good beat and music? Personally, being a musician, I like stuff that has a beat, but in terms of like listening to a podcast, anything that you can kind of listen to 
and not think about the physical activity, kind of distract your mind from the work that you're doing, it's always good for you to do harder and uh, more intense work. So let's talk now because all of this talk kind of leads us into the fact that you're bringing back the marching band after a 50 year hiatus and what this will do for everyone. So why is that? I mean, why now bring this back after 50 years? Well, it was part of the, the, the Viking um, bold plan to kind of give a bigger experience to the students of Augustana. Uh, they launched a school of music. Uh, last year they had the drum line and then obviously this year bringing back the Viking marching band because music during sporting events, live music during sporting events makes a huge difference. And we saw that, we did a little band camp preview uh, this past week and just playing, a, not, not even at a game day, the football team was amped and excited. Everyone in the audience was amped. How do you think this will affect the athletes? Yeah, so I mean, we're so excited about the collaboration with the School of Music and the Viking Marching Band. And you could see that on Friday. They're just, uh, the, the excitement that they showed and the energy that they showed simply from just hearing the band for the first time after only, what, four days of camp uh, really showed how much it's going to bring to the atmosphere of our game days this year. And super excited to see how that uh, motivates our team. Is there anything you consider when it comes to the songs that you're choosing? I know you said you like to pick songs that are popular, trending, because that's what everyone's listening to and likes. But is there anything as far as like the tempo goes? And do you pay attention to that when you're picking the songs for uh, games? Uh, the, the majority of the music that we pick is going to be up-tempo, because we really want to get the adrenaline flowing of the athletes and the fans. Um, this year, we kind of polled everyone, uh, the, the students, because obviously we're a new organization. And we're doing some new selection because we want to build the band around what these students want. Well, it sounds like it's going to be a really, really great season. Looking forward to it. So thank you both so much for coming in and telling us all about this and giving us some tips that we can use on our own. Thanks thank for you. having us.